again, you know, before the Troubles. July 12th was a very important day for you because it's your birthday, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so. I used to think, you know, my mama used to tell me, you want to write marching on the 12th, I'll write marching for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> And then they started to throw stones at them. I thought nobody, nobody liked me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then that that day, then the the fourth of May, nineteen seventy-two. So just before we get into what happened, you know, in the afternoon, what would have been a, a typical morning? Like, what time did you get out of bed? What did you have for breakfast? You took your tea with milk and sugar in it. That's the way it came. So my daddy used to this big white pot like a maple pot or something i know big white pot we no lid on it and it was monked and sugared and that was it and your tea was poured out of that and then um the same with the toast my daddy just used to be out in the, out in the kitchen making a toast he couldn't make the toast quick enough and then it was coming and sat down the table and everybody just grabbed the toast before it even touched the table to be honest with you. Was it six moody boys and three <laughs> loud girls, or was it nine raucous kids? What uh-huh, was it uh, like? It was all of the above. Okay. You know, there were bad form some mornings, having a row some mornings, you know, better crack all our mornings, you know. It's just just a, a family just waking them up and a whole crowd of them. And you said it was your, your daddy who made the breakfast. Where, where was your mom uh, at breakfast time? Hi. Uh, um, my mammy normally didn't get up at breakfast. My mammy, you could see when I look back at it, they had a way of working. My mammy used to work on the three and four in the morning at home doing all the darning and you'd, you'd come into our house or well, if you're up late, well, especially when I say, when I was 16 and 17, I played in a wee country band around Derry and I used to come home about say one or half one in the morning or whatever. And my mammy would be sitting with a singer sewing machine in the same living room, the same table in the, in the living room and she'd be doing all the sewing and all that sort of stuff. So my mum used to work late in the night doing all the mending and the clothes and all that sort of stuff, you know. Uh, and in the Craigan back then, most men were at home, right? Most men were out of work, were unemployed. Aye, well, you know, that's right. You know, um, both my mommy and daddy were at home all the time. So um, that's right, you know, that there was, a, as the song goes, you know, the. The woman all worked in the factories, so the men played a mother's role, you know, fed the children and then walked the dog, and that is true. I mean, the, the men all sort of um, hung around, the, you know, the, done the, so the house, they were like house husbands, you know, yeah. uh, and done all that stuff while the woman headed off the factories to do the work, you know, so unemployment wasn't unusual. Um, people struggled to get work. There were big families that don't even know if it was viable for people to work to be honest you know like look at you know you, our, our street like every house was a big family yeah. very few houses had a small family you know, you're talking about an average of 12 children some people end up as far as 22 children in our area you know and uh, the family like it's just bizarre but that's you know it seems a massive amount now but back then it just seemed like normal so i am so in that res- was not respect at uh, at um it required somebody to stay at home, you know. I, you know, I didn't. I knew I was shot, like, but I don't know how I knew. You know, it's a true saying. They say you never hear the bang. Well, I didn't hear the bang, so 